So why would I want to buy one of these, uh, Mr. Radio Shack Manager? Why would you want to buy one? Because now everybody's a KO cooler vigilante. Transplanted those Reason Traub and Crimson Cushion Beefsteak tomatoes up to a bigger planter. Uh, I felt they were starting to get limited for root space, and I want really solid production out of those. Kind of like those. Yeah. March 27th, 2023. Well, here we are now, just shy of April. And things are really humming along. Uh, pretty exciting to see the jungle exploding in here. The turmeric is just blown up. Uh, thank God we're getting close to a season where that can go outside. The other one is barely getting any light because it's in the shadow of its older, well, I was going to say older sister, sort of more like mom. The Roma tomatoes have just turned into a giant mass of vines. Uh, I'm going to come in here and do some training to something I think maybe. I haven't decided entirely on that yet, but we do have lots of uh, flowers popping on and imagine we probably are starting to form some fruit here somewhere if I can find them. Well, see there's some flowers. And I do have a bit of a bug infestation here with some uh, fungus gnats. I've been using neem cake to help suppress their egg laying cycle. Uh, I am still having issues with them. I did overwater this heavily this last time and that was a big mistake. I should have waited, but I got all antsy in my pantsy. And uh, <laughs> so I overwatered. So I won't do that again. Um, but I might also get some predators in here, some uh, predator species to wipe out the fungus gnats and kind of just uh, simulate a natural environment, of course, you know, where the, the predators are taking care of some of the pests and kind of balancing that whole ecosystem as best I can in a controlled environment, which is very hard to mimic Mother Nature. All right, uh, let's see, I'm with it. Uh, here we've got the... Uh, Broccoli is starting to take off. You can tell that these had uh, too little light early on. That's why those stems are all kind of leggy and knocked over. You don't want to see that in seedlings. What you want to see is a seedling that looks like this, right from the base, like that. So, here's a great example of what not to do. <laughs> uh, the jalapeno early peppers are starting to really take off. Uh, in fact, I'm going to transplant those. I don't know if I'll get to it tonight or not, but I think I'm going to pump them up to one of these bigger pots with a little more soil space and probably take them down off the table so I can start some spring start stuff in here. Um, anyway, they're doing really well. The uh, Rising Traub tomato and the Juan Crimson uh, Cushion Beefsteak tomato are doing really well since their transplant in the new bin with uh, I loaded them with rock dust and uh, you know neem cake and uh, kelp meal and uh, copper uh, not copper uh, wood sand and a little rock phosphate down the list so they're rocking and uh, everything was fed last night heavily with sea shield and forage foliar so uh, they're all bouncing back nice and hard. Uh, the red peppers I got from the store are doing pretty well. These guys, well, I really got to move these tomatoes out of here so these guys can get better light. You can see they're kind of starving for light a little bit. But this one that got going a little better and has got a little closer to the light uh, is doing pretty well. So that's cool. I'll be curious to see what we get out of those. Um, over here, the lettuce is doing okay. Uh, growing slowly but a little bit stalled. It's kind of warm in here for lettuce. And this one is still kind of hurting, but it's sort of growing, but eh, whatever. Uh, basil is still struggling. Um, 
in these crappy planches, which I probably should just throw out. Uh, beans are were doing okay, and then this six-inch pot that I stuck in here was stupid, and that really limited their root space. But they did yield some beans, and I didn't even notice they were yielding beans. So I went to try one the other day, and it was merely because it was too far gone. So I'll probably just yank these, and uh, uh, maybe we'll see what the basil in the in the sides of that pot do if I bring it up on the table or put it in something better, maybe in a window at this point. Uh, what else? Uh, so ginger, uh, ginger's doing well over here. Uh, the uh, the beets never really. <laughs> never really got a chance to get going. They sprouted and then this uh, sweet potato took it over. No big deal. I kind of was half expecting that. Um, and the sweet potato vines are just continuing to evolve around here. And I really like that kind of jungle effect, so that's kind of cool. And uh, I'm sure they're making some nice sweet potatoes down below here. Let's have a, a peek if we can see anything. No, but rest assured they're making sweet potato. Uh, the rosemary is doing okay. Uh, can't wait to get that out in some full sunlight and give it a prune and some real love. Uh, lemon tree is doing well. Uh, the olive tree is doing well here. Uh, this is all new growth since we went into the new grow tent. So since uh, uh, I don't know, early February or something like that. Uh, my cutting I think is probably rooted in here. I'll have to check sometime soon. That's for a friend of mine who requested a olive tree cutting. Uh, and the hibiscus is doing well, and actually it looks like it's getting ready to flower again. So that's kind of cool. So uh, I guess that's the tour for the uh, controlled growing environment for now. I guess I'll just give you a shot of these uh, parsley and uh, other rosemary and the other ginger. Well, you know how it is when you're a plant addict. you got to have more plants. This is one I've been missing for a long time. Lemon Verbena. Uh, Alicia Citrodella, I believe it is uh, in Latin. Um, this is an awesome plant. It propagates very easily by cutting. You can take a cutting like that, strip these couple leaves off, stick it in moist soil, it'll set roots, and you can grow a ton of these. One year I had these shrubs, literally woody shrubs, the base like that just blowing up and um, I may do something like that again this year but uh, makes an excellent tea taste and smells wonderful sort of lemon scented but not overpowering um, wonderful smell to have in your garden excellent herb for cooking with and makes an excellent tea so uh, I'm going to import these into the uh, grow tent but before I do so uh, they came from Amazon I have to inspect them and make sure that we don't have some sort of bugs or other infestation that I don't want to import into my grow lab. Alright, just thought I'd do a quick update and I'll show you once we get them in. Alright, we'll just have a quick look-see up close here before we make any transplants. I don't see anything other than potentially a little frost damage or just battering damage from being in a box in transit. And of course, they're going into high nutrition, regenerative ag practices with all the pieces. So, should have good immunity and health uh, right smart off if they don't already. So, let's get them in some soil, huh? What you think? All right, I stuck some neem cake, some kelp, and some rock dust in here. I'm going to throw just a touch of. This uh, Foma Garden Tone, just to put a little bit of nutrient in there as a base in the soil. Not much at all, obviously the rest is going to come from foliar feeds and other amendments we'll add later on. This will be the base mix underneath. And we'll set our plants in here. I'm going to put all four of them together. We'll just grow a huge propagation base bush so we can take thousands of cuts if we need to off of them. Completely scalable for one pot. Yeah. Alright, so I got them out of the container. 
I'm basically going to uh, sit them in about like that and then I'll add some more Pro Mix on top to fill out the top to here and that's good for now. I don't want to put a ton of soil into this and I don't need to uh, and I can always add later. Um, quick look at the root balls on these. Oh, I guess I dusted them but uh, they're fairly fairly root bound. Well established but starting to get root bound. Some of them are a little more root bound than others as you can see but uh, that's okay. Uh, we're going to go around if you, don't know how, if you don't know how to do this you transplant something like this I'm going to go around and break up that root edge like that so that those roots don't see that container space anymore and start seeking out into your new soil or the new soil that they're exposed to so uh, don't forget to do that when you transplant you'll uh, dramatically change and shift how those roots develop and how healthy the plant does remember <clears throat> In truly healthy plants, uh, really high photosynthesis plants, you'll have 80% of the biomass will be in the soil and 20% above. So when you see a monstrous plant and you think that's big, think about that's only one-fifth of the plant's total biomass. If it's a truly healthy plant, it's growing at it, its maximum capacity and unlocking its total genetic potential. Something to think about. Let's get some Pro Mix on. All right, there we go. Got a little more Pro Mix in to fill them out. They're planted. I'm going to soak them down with a good drench of some water. And then I think everything in here is going to get a foliar feed. Probably do a little bit of Sea Shield and a little bit of Forage Foliar Feed. And, uh, you know, keep things growing along. And these guys will take right off in this environment. They're going to love this nice summery environment. These are actually a perennial shrub, uh, I forget what zone, but it's like South America basically. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Lemon Verbena, check it out. I guess I should just give a quick tour of where things are at here quick before we close out. You can see things are taking off. Hibiscus is uh, getting ready to throw a flower out again soon. Broccoli's coming along, jalapeno uh, hot pepper is doing well. Rising Trobe and Clemson Beefsteak Tomato doing well. <laughs> Rosemary is hanging in there, getting ready for burst out into some real sun. Uh, all the sweet potatoes are just cranking, of course. And let's have a look at the ginger, looking good. Red bell peppers at various accelerated stages. The new uh, tomatoes from Seeds of Italy uh, are up, germinated and cranked along. And let's see, lettuce is, uh, eh, and, eh, and this is doing okay, and these are still on cue to be dumped. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, turmeric is cranking, uh, here's a sweet potato vine peeking its way in here looking for any of the extra light. The big turmeric is just rocking, we're going to be full jungle in here soon. And then uh, so is the uh, gigantic uh, Roma tomato planter, which has now taken over probably five square feet of the grow space. So does that. Alright, so that's a quick tour. Oh, and uh, sweet corn, bodacious sweet corn seeds are up, so that's exciting. And that means i got to get this planter up in more intense light, because those seedlings need good light. So, that's exciting. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seas Network. Remember, keep your friends close and your farmers closer.